Welcome, everybody, to another edition of Take the Hill. It's a leadership podcast designed to connect you with individuals exhibiting significant leadership within their field, even in retirement, as we're going to learn. So we are excited to be back here today uh, with Dennis and Angelo as well, and also our special guest, Lee Cockerell, who you're going to learn a little bit more about in a moment. Lee, welcome to the show. Good. Good to see you again, even though you're not down in Orlando. <laughs> I know. I know. That's so true. And a little backstory on there. Normally, you know, Dennis and I uh, take a group of students in our leadership class to Orlando each fall. And Lee is often gracious enough uh, with his time uh, to come speak to us uh, over the past few years. And like you said, it's always exciting to learn. Or I know we learn something new every time, uh, not just about business and organizations, but for us with uh, young kids, a lot about uh, <laughs> leadership, which Lee has said many times is probably the most difficult leadership job uh, you could be in, but the most important. So uh, today's episode is a little bit special for us. Uh, we have two students here who are going to kind of take our role. So we have Hannah. Good morning, Hannah. Good morning. And we have Emily. Good morning, Emily. Good morning. All right. So without further ado, Dennis, Angelo, and myself are going to step aside, and you guys have the keys to the show. So the show is yours with the introduction of Lee and some questions from our audience. All right. So Lee Cockrell is the former executive vice president of operations for the Walt Disney World Resort. Lee led a team of 40,000 cast members and was responsible for the operations of 20 resort hotels, four theme parks, two water parks, a shopping and entertainment village, as well as the creation of his own leadership program at Disney. He created the Disney Great Leader Strategies, which helps train 7,000 leaders at Walt Disney World. Lee held various executive positions with Hilton Hotels in the Marriott Corporation before joining Disney in 1990 to open the Disneyland Paris project. We are excited to be joined by Lee Cockrell and learn about his lessons in leadership. So thank you for joining us, Lee. You, Emily. <laughs> so because this is a live episode, we were lucky to get questions from people who registered for the event. So the first question we have for you is you write and speak a lot about time management. In addition to your book, what are some great first steps to begin improving in this area? Well, I think it's like anything, you know, uh, the one reason people don't do a very good job at keeping their life under control is how they use their time. And uh, uh, I think the biggest problem is that somehow we don't teach it in high school or college, really, a, a system. I mean, time management is no different than taking a math, math class or physics or uh, anything else. I mean, it's a learned thing. You're not born disorganized. <laughs> this is a create, this is a, uh, something you just weren't taught. And certainly it's one of those things when you grow up, uh, some of you probably had mothers and fathers who uh, did develop your ability to be disciplined and to do what you're supposed to do and keep your promises and be on time. And uh, your culture early on certainly has a lot to do with how you're wired around discipline and about how you are about planning and, and understanding which things you should be working on in your life. But uh, I think the schools, even middle schools, uh, my grandkids went to, uh, they all got a planner in seventh grade and they were taught how to use it. And uh, it, you know, it, it really doesn't matter how much you know or what college you go to or where you graduate from if you can't get things done. Uh, you know, we got a lot of smart people not doing much, and uh, <laughs> life is overwhelming. What happens is, and uh, Hannah, Hannah just told me, life is overwhelming. It gets more complicated. First, you just go off to school, and life is good, and then you get married, and then you have a baby, and then your mother-in-law's coming over, and your <laughs> Christmas and Thanksgiving, and, and I mean, it just yeah go back and get your MBA and then you uh, get a job and your boss wants everything done by five o'clock Friday and you're supposed to be at a soccer game and uh, <laughs> it just it's tough 
and it can be managed. And uh, that's why I started teaching time management a long time ago, because I was already disciplined, but I didn't really understand how to have a system. And you know that uh, any, uh, any successful organization has a system for how they run it. Uh, you do this first, you do that. It's kind of like a recipe book, you know. Uh, if you forget to put the yeast in, it doesn't work very well. And uh, you've got to do things in the right order sometimes. And uh, men are famous for putting together Christmas toys and having 12 parts left over when they're finished. So, I mean, and you don't want to have that in your personal life because... Um, I think a lot of it's very emotional and, and, uh, and uh, can get you off track. So I went to this class and I learned a lot about how to plan my day, how to plan my week, my, uh, I would say, uh, the year, what should I be working on now? I mean, for all the guys out there listening today, uh, Valentine's Day will come on February 14th. And it, you could make a reservation now or you could wait till the 14th and not be able to get in. It's up to you. Uh, Christmas will be here on the same day. <laughs> or you can either get your act together or you can go out Christmas Eve and shop where, where there's nothing left to buy. <laughs> and you're going to pay twice the price. And, or you can forget to tell people how much you appreciate them until it's too late one day. And... Uh, so all of these things, there's so many things, and that's why I wrote the book, Magic, is giving people uh, a point of view, because everything, all we know is what we know. And people, if somebody's never explained to you that you can average, average, actually take a hold of your life, and you can keep your life under control, and uh, teaches you how to pick the right priorities. You know, one of the things in time management is that you have to learn two things. You got, first, you got to learn to... Uh, be doing things right now that don't pay off till later. Like Hannah, when do you when do you start bonding with a newborn baby? Yeah, it's I mean, in the tummy. Right while they're in the tummy, it's exactly <laughs> right. And actually, uh, my son and his wife played some of the videos or audios like this when our first grandson was in the womb. And uh, they said when he heard my name and saw him, heard my voice, he started kicking around. So, and I have a great relationship with him today. But it's true, you start right away. And uh, then when they're born, you hug them, you hold them, you kiss them, you talk to them, you make sounds, uh, uh, you read to them as they get older, then you make sure they get a book and get them to bed and read. And then you discipline them when they have to, because these are things that pay off later. Discipline pays off later reading, having great reading skills and imagination and uh, vocabulary pays off later. Uh, I mean, it's just amazing. The things you have to, and you, get, you can't wait. You can't start reading to your kids when they're 12. I mean, you got to put things in a certain order in your life. And uh, because that's the way life works. Well, uh, it's just, uh, you got to, you got to be, you got to be anticipating what you need to do way ahead of when it's going to matter. And um, anticipation and reflection are two of the best things in time management. Mm -hmm. Reflect on in the past what you didn't do as well as you should every day. So you do it better the next time it happens. And uh, anticipate what could happen if you don't do something. And now let me turn this phone off. <laughs> um, so, you know, that, when you think about it, every day taking time to number one, just take five minutes and reflect on what happened yesterday. How you spoke to somebody, uh, a, a paper you turned in that you thought about two more things on the way home that you should have put in that paper, uh, a conversation you had with somebody, uh, anything. Because reflection really programs your brain for the next time you have that sort of thing. Because you thought about it. And uh, the other one is, uh, anticipation and Hannah will have a lot of anticipation and you know Patrick will have a lot of anticipation because he's gonna have teenagers and you got to think <laughs> what can happen if I don't do this and that and have this conversation with them and create the right uh, trust 
with them. So uh, when they are having an issue, they'll trust me enough to come and talk to me about it. I'll handle it properly. But, I mean, you know, it's very, uh, it's not hard, but you got to understand that everything matters. Everything matters. I mean, um, that's why Disney's so successful because that's one thing they believe. Everything matters. One piece of paper on the ground is too much. That's it. You know, if you don't have your name tag on, that's a problem. If you don't <clears throat> smile, if you don't treat people courteously with courtesy, and uh, I mean, that's a problem. Uh, if you're late to work, that's a problem. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of people let those things go. So if you want to be great, you got to think about everything matters. If you want to be average, that's easier. You can let a lot of things go. You don't have to hire the best people. You don't have to train them. You don't have to treat them right. Uh, and you can and you can be, become very average very quick. That's about one of the easiest things to do. You can be an average mother or below average by not doing the right things. Uh, you can be a great student or a good student. Okay. You can be a great friend or a good friend. Uh, and I always talk about the difference between great and good. You want a good surgeon or a great one? You know, you want a good doctor to deliver that baby or a great one? <laughs> I mean, it's just, and it's a choice. That's the problem. It's a choice. Mm -hmm. you know? So, so I, I, all day long. But I, I, I suspect uh, you all should take some time, either take a course, read about it, uh, look at some of my work, because this one thing will probably impact your life more than anything else. As they say, you're not a product of your circumstances, you're a product of your decisions. Right? Do any of you know people who made the wrong decisions? Or where they spend their time. And they At don't. times, I can say I probably made the wrong decisions. Well, maybe you did. Maybe you didn't. But I accounted for them and I turned it around. There you go. We all make decisions. It's the next decision and the next one, and that you get better at it because that's what happens as you get older and you have more experience and more exposure and more education. We do get, you know, I'm a lot. Uh, I have more common sense now than I did when I was 21, 22 years old. And uh, that's what happens with exposure and experience and uh, dealing with difficult situations. And uh, so, but that, that's how you have to think about time management. You got to get good at it because the world does not care anything about you. The only person who loves you is your mother. <laughs> <laughs> and maybe your husband, but uh, <laughs> you got to remember, people always say, what can I do for you? I'm here for you. I'm like, yeah, well, maybe they are. I mean, until it gets too difficult or, and mostly because most people have enough problems of their own uh, that uh, uh, Daniel and I just did a big program for Disney cast members, a webinar we did for 28,000 cast members that got laid off. We developed an hour and a half one Ian Valerie and my daughter-in-law and we did it and, and uh, we gave them great advice on all the strengths they have because they work for Disney, not to underestimate what they can achieve, not to underestimate how much better they are than the average person out there in the workforce. Uh, because, you know, when you're at Disney for 10, 15, 20 years, you think being great is just normal. Well, let me tell you, employers would love to grab these people. And so we set this up, <clears throat> we gave them really re-emphasized uh, what they're good at. And uh, even, no matter what their position was, it doesn't matter. The attitude, uh, the attitude to serve, the attitude to be on time, the attitude to be flexible, the attitude to go beyond what you have to. And, uh, and then uh, we worked with another guy who used to work at Disney and we set up a, a website where they can put their what, uh, resumes in it. And we can give that to employers out and around the world and they can go in there and look for whatever they want. Uh, uh, you know, there's, cause in that, in that list are electricians, industrial engineers. I mean, every job you can imagine and they're really great people. And uh, so we did that and then we gave them, we had a lady from Stanford University, a friend of ours who put together a way for them to stay, try to think about staying healthy during these uh, times of uh, stress and anxiety, anxiety is probably at an all-time high right now around the world. And uh, 
that can really take you down if you don't stay healthy and take care of yourself and eat right and get enough sleep. And uh, so we put all that together. So I tell people the other day, quit telling people you're sorry they got laid off. Do something. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> help them. you know, I mean, somebody told me once the last question you should always ask somebody after you work, work with them, meet with them, have a meeting, uh, they come to see you. Is there anything else I can do for you? You know, is there I, uh, I worked in staffing after college and I remember I was the last one in the office and I, I, I well, my director was also there, which was very uncommon. And he heard me say that when I got off the phone, he said that that's what we're looking for. That's a great question to ask people. Um, and I, I'm a recruiter. I work in talent acquisition. And oftentimes that's how I end an offer. Is there anything else I can do for you other than the congratulations and welcome to our company? But Absolutely. Yeah. You uh, really, it's a, it's a trust thing that happens. People go, they, they register up in their brain, you a little different than other people. You know, when you treat people right, it goes in, uh, stays up there. And if you treat people badly, it goes up there too. But <laughs> it's, uh, yeah, it's just a comp. You know, my granddaughter, when I wrote the book, The Customer Rules, I asked Margo, she was 12 at the time, she's 22 now. I said, Margo, what's the most important rule in customer service? Here, a 12 year old, she looked at me and said, Pappy, the most important rule is be nice. <laughs> you know, be yeah. nice. What can I do for you? Is there anything else? And she graduated in May from the University of Colorado and she wasn't able to find a job. So she started her own little company doing, she's doing all kinds of work, uh, editing uh, podcasts. She's uh, editing uh, college courses, developing wow. questions for the new courses. Uh, and then all of a sudden, a few months, she got a, she got a job it's online working. Mm -hmm. Now she's got two jobs. She's working for two or three people. And the reason we, I thought that was great is when people call you and say, we have want to offer you a job. What have you been doing since you graduated? You can say, I've been working and I have my own company. <laughs> started. I'm Very important. Money. Instead, instead of saying, well, I'm just laying on the couch waiting for you to call. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, all experience is good experience. All. I tell young people today, you come out of college, don't worry about what job you take. Take any job. If, try to get, if you got a company you want to target, go there and they say, well, the only job we got is, you know, cleaning those bathrooms. Take it. You know, your parents won't be happy, but uh, you're not supposed to do what your parents want. You're supposed to do what you want. And if you want to get in, you go in and you prove you're the best. You're great. You got a great attitude. And next thing you know, in six months, you'll be in charge of the bathroom cleaners and then you'll be a manager and then you'll be, this is how the real life works. Uh, um, that is how your life worked, right? You came out of the army and you started off at Hilton and that's how it went for you, correct? And I, my son, you know, I paid a hundred grand for him to go to Boston University 50 years, 40 years ago, 30 years ago. And uh, he started in the parking lot at, uh, at Disney at Epcot as an hourly. And that was good because I encouraged him to do that because a lot of parents freak out if you just got out of college and you got your master's and you're, you got to tell your mother you're a hostess at, uh, you know, Dunkin' Donuts or something. <laughs> your parents go nuts. Don't worry about that stuff. The jobs, when you're young and get out of college, all experience matters. In fact, I would say the most important thing is get out of your village. I tell young people today, when you graduate, go to New York, LA, Chicago, Parrot, go some, go get out of your village where uh, you may not have as much exposure as you should have. Because my wife and I lived in uh, Washington, DC when we got married. I was 23, she was 21. Then we moved to Chicago, had a baby. Uh, then we moved to New York City worked in the Waldorf Astoria, then we moved to Los Angeles, and then we moved to Philadelphia, and then we moved to Paris and Boston, and we loved every one of those. They're exciting places. I mean, they're exciting. And by the way, if you want to, if you have any bigotry or racism in your bloodstream, go work in those cities. You'll love everybody, because everybody's from somewhere. And by the way, the hotel business, the entertainment business, you can't, once you start working, you work for, with people from everywhere and it, they become your friends. And uh, 
as I said, I have a lot of friends called with the name Mohammed. <laughs> if I was still living in Oklahoma, I probably wouldn't, <laughs> you know. And uh, so, uh, yeah, it. Uh, so time management. Spend your time thinking about what you need to do now. That may not pay off for 10, 20, 30, 40 years from now. And, uh, you know, saving for retirement. You start when you can. Now, I don't care if it's only $5 a week and later on you put $10. But over 40 Do the things now that won't pay off till later. Yeah, exactly. That's great. So, uh, you know, being right. a good person pays off later. People want to help you. Apologizing when you do something wrong pays off. Don't be defensive. You know, all these little things that make you who you are. And uh, you have control on that. So use your time wisely. Time is not on your side. Uh, it'll be Christmas again and then Christmas again. And then I said, there's only four ages. You're born, you're 21, you're 65, and you're dead. So you better get with it. And I'm well, sure your parents, how many of your parents cannot believe how old you are? And that they have a grandchild. <laughs> you might, they're just going like, what? What happened here? This is what happens. Sure. And by the way, so, that's going to really pay off for you. That's going to pay off, even though it's hard. And, but because let me tell you, at the end of the day, if you can't make hard decisions and you can't have hard conversations with people, don't have children. <laughs> and don't become... So, uh, that's Leader, perfect. That's all you do. Well, that, that's all you do. that brings us to our next question is, it, and I hear you saying average versus great and be nice. Well, how do you be nice and get great at having those difficult conversations with your friends, with your family, with your future bosses? I know I've been put into a lot of situations where I'm just like, A plus B doesn't equal C, but how do I tell you that in a way that I'm not going to get fired and I'm going to get what I need? <laughs> Don't ever worry about getting fired. That's the first thing. <laughs> That's great Make advice. Sure you know what you stand for and what you won't stand for. Make sure you know what your principles and values are because you're going to get tested over and over and probably already have. There's going to be inappropriate things happen in the workplace. There's going to be inappropriate comments. There's going to be inappropriate leadership. And, uh, you know, I've been fired once, passed over once. I, I mean, I am... And already I get in trouble every day with somebody mad at me because I'm stating my political views. They say, you're going to lose business. I say, I don't care. That's not my problem. My problem is to be a good role model. I want my grandkids to be proud of me. I, that's how they learned who they are. And uh, you got to, you got to pick it. So in the workplace, one of the best ways you is, is ask your boss when you just ask your boss, how much of my salary is for my opinion? Ask him. I did that to my boss because he thought he knew everything. I said, Al, how much of my pay is for my opinion? He said, well, most of it. I said, okay, good. I'm going to start giving it to you because I don't <laughs> agree with a lot of things. And then he wouldn't listen. So I would say from now on, when I have a big hard issue and you never, you always interrupt me and never let me finish, I'm going to write it up and I'm going to send it over to you. And the last line is going to say, when you finish reading this, call me and we can discuss it. You know? Or you can tell people when I, you go to work for them, uh, here's how I work. If I see something or I can make the business better or we're doing something, do you want me, do you want to hear from me? My granddaughter yesterday had a brand new job. Monday she started. And during the fun, I mean, here's brand new. She, she's only been working for the company like an hour and they're having <laughs> a call. And she said, would you like some input from me? And the people were kind of, yeah, of course we do. She said, well, you know, we are not, you're not delivering what you said you would on your website. And a lot of people are complaining. And I suggest we have a separate website for the people who are not getting the product they ordered. Let's don't let the whole world see all these complaints. Don't let the Smart people lady. who had a problem. <laughs> and, you know, now that's Margot, and she's uh, OCD like me and like her grandmother, and and she can't not speak up. I mean, right is right with her. Now the boys, who knows what they would do? I don't know. You know? <laughs> but, 
But you've got to decide, and the best way is when you go for an interview to have this discussion. Because you're going to see things and you're going to know things and you already do that your boss doesn't know and should know. And you're going to know who's screwing around. You're going to know who's doing what. I mean, you're going to know everything. And really, it's irresponsible for the your leader or for you not to be able to, you're there to make the company better. And that, I just have that conversation right out. When I went for interviews, I talked to my, listen, I want you to know that uh, when I have a family event, I won't be here. I'm going to the first grade sing along with Christmas. Even though the kids don't sing, I'm going to be there. And <laughs> if you have a meeting, I won't be coming to it. And my boss said, great. He said, that's how I work too. He said, Lee, always take care of your family first. But having the discussion up front, because you might not want to take the job when you hear the answers. Get those hard things out of the way. Uh, and, the, and I would say also, if your boss puts you in a position to do something inappropriate, illegal, um, with your, I'd say you need to, that day, keep doing a good job and start looking for something else because that can only get worse. And uh, I, uh, I can't tell you how many times I was given bribes in the hotel business and had to, you know, I really needed the money too. But <laughs> one guy gave me a thousand bucks, 10 $100 bills back in 1971. We were so poor, we didn't even have a car. My heart started racing, but I gave him back because, you know, that lives in your brain forever when you become a dishonest person. and. Uh, <laughs> And you might even start doing the wrong things with your child if you do. <laughs> so you've just got to be clear. Clarity of expectations for both sides. You've got to be clear with the boss. The boss got to be clear with you. And you got to, and I'd say, say to those things, is there anything else that you want to tell me? I want to be clear that I understand my responsibilities. And I, want to, I need to be clear about when my child's sick, what your position is on me uh, not coming in or taking a sick day or being late. I had those conversations the other way around with everybody in my office, three ladies that worked for me. And I told them when I hired them, you always take care of your kid. We'll cover it. Don't worry. Even though we had a company policy, it said the mother couldn't take a sick day because of a sick baby. <laughs> I told her, take it anyway. <laughs> well, that's a, that's a good boss right there. I really like what you said about what Margo said. Um, that's some, that's advice that I'd been given and I've read in books too, is it can come across really hard to just give your input, but just prefacing it with a question, would you like my input? Can I give you some feedback? Uh, I've, I've been, I've read and been told that that's a very important way to start that conversation to still appear nice, as you said, um, but still start having those difficult conversations. Absolutely. I mean, and we all get taught, and especially women, get taught to kind of be, no, don't, don't, don't stir things up, you know, that, no, 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 those days are over. In fact, I'll tell you that bosses are over. You better be a teacher today if you're going to get your team to be on doing the right things and then not intimidating you and using their authority to push you around and to threaten you and to make you nervous and no, that's, just think about you. Be a teacher, you'll get better results and people will trust you and they'll tell you what's going on. They'll help you run your business. But that bossing people around those days are gone, especially young people like you are, you don't put up with it. Mm. What do you see as the strengths and potential weaknesses as the upcoming generations enter the workforce? I think the strength is obviously they're unbelievably smart and uh, uh, have have a lot of exposure and experience to the world. You know, when I left Oklahoma, I was 20 years old. I'd never been out of the state, never been out of the state. I knew nothing. I went in the army and I didn't even know what Vietnam was. I never heard of it. And today I've done business and traveled to 45 countries around the world and I'm a different person. So. I think you all are on the right track. Any exposure you can get, any experience, having friends from other places, uh, keep in, I don't think, I don't see a downside. I, I hear all these people all want to say, well, these young people, you know, <laughs> no, no. There are people in every generation that are great and there are people in every generation that are not. 
And uh, people say, well, these millennials are these. Uh, I said, well, you better learn to work with them because that's all we got. <laughs> so, you, you know, and so you all just uh, know what you stand for, what you're trying to achieve. Uh, and uh, I would just say, don't put up with things that don't fit into your lifestyle and don't fit into your, uh, your values because corporate America and businesses can be pretty rough. There's a lot of, I'm sure you all had jobs. You see what goes on. Uh, I mean, it's, it's like, God, if, if you knew everything that was going on in a business, you couldn't sleep. I mean, it would be like, and so you've got to make sure people know, people know who has, who stands for what they stand for. When you, when people know who you are and what you stand for, they won't do that to you. Always let people know, you know, if, if people don't know where you stand on racism, well, they should. If people don't know where you stand on sexual orientation, they should. And if they don't know where you stand on treating everybody right, making sure everybody matters and they know they matter, you should be talking about that. People need to know where you are. Then they don't come. And they look for the weak link, you know, the person who just wants to get promoted and he'll do whatever the boss says and no, that, and I would just say, you're, I would imagine your parents have talked to you about those over the years. Of, uh, you're going to be face this. And it's going to come when you least expect it. And the only thing that can help you fight it is knowing what your own values are. Already. Know what you stand for now. It won't. Because when it comes, it'll be one morning and your boss will walk in and do something. Or ask you to do something. And you've got to know what the answer is because like you're trying to teach your children, don't get in that car if somebody's been drinking. I don't want you to, you know, you've taught them that long before it's gonna happen. The teaching way back here causes the reaction up there. And uh, I see it over and over again. Uh, you gotta hammer it in. I tell my grandkids, even when I'm dead, I'll be keeping an eye on them. They better, <laughs> they better behave and they better do it because I'll come down and just, and they, they believe me, or they did when they were younger. But <laughs> I mean, we talk about what are you going to do when you go to a party and there's drugs there? You're going to stay or are you going to leave? You know, when somebody, well, you all know all the stars, you get put in situations. Uh, I just did a, a new class on my new Cockrell Academy. It's going to come out next month and it's on diversity and inclusiveness. And there's a quiz on there. The quiz would be like, okay, Emily, are you ever with a group of your friends and uh, somebody's telling jokes about gay people and you don't do anything, you don't say anything? Hey, uh, Hannah, are you ever around in a group where they're talking about uh, uh, an African-American or a black family and uh, they're funny and they're laughing or Muslim and you don't say anything? You don't do anything? I put some good questions in there to make people really upset. So, because at the end of the day, you got to step in there if you're going to be a leader. Uh, you've got to teach your children that not to bully kids. That can be learned. That doesn't. I mean, it's you got to talk. You got to talk about it. And I'm sure, Hunter, you got to make a list, Hunter, all the things you got to talk about over the next few years, and so, make sure you don't because. That's where young people learn is from their parents. And that's where new employees learn from their employer. That's where you get it. You'll get it the first week you're in a new job. You'll get, you'll know what the culture is. You'll know, and you already do. You go to play, you already know. You've talked to friends of yours who are in situations that, so just awareness, awareness, and uh, it's a big deal being aware of what's going on around you so you don't get sucked in. And you every day you read about it in the newspaper, somebody who, uh, I didn't know, I, I, I thought, uh, yeah. and no, 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 you knew. And you just didn't think you were gonna get caught. And uh, so uh, you just gotta be true to yourself and it'll work out better in the long run because some of those short-term short wins can be really painful. I tell my grandkids, do not 
get in a car if you've been drinking a beer or if you smoked any marijuana, well, I hope you didn't, but if you do, that's, you take an Uber, you call us, do not ever do this. Do not get in a car with somebody who's been drinking. Do not uh, have a relationship with somebody without protection. And they get embarrassed when I talk to them about that. And, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and um, over and over and over. My granddaughter, when we were riding in the car when she was about seven and she looked at me, she said, Peppy, are we Democrats or Republicans? <laughs> I said, Margo, you'll decide that when you grow up. Oh, that's you know, awesome. You made the right decision. <laughs> <laughs> but no, it's about, I don't want to, you can over influence kids, which is not going to be, you got to be careful. What influence you're giving your children every day. If you start talking about, black people or gay, gay people or they hear your husband and you talking about it or that, that will mom and dad you know mom and dad and it's so powerful and people say well the kids are asleep we can talk about this let me tell you what the kids are never asleep. <laughs> they've already they've already got a listening device in your bedroom where they're listening to everything you and your husband say it's in there somewhere you got to find it <laughs> or they're sitting on the steps or they know they know they've already searched your room they know what's in every drawer they know what's in the closet uh yeah, you guys did that so <laughs> <laughs> I, my child doesn't sleep and i've learned that in eight months already that they don't sleep it's not a thing <laughs> so you're talking about how it's important to know yourself and it, you know when you get asked questions by leadership what their culture is so that brings us to if you could just choose one word that describes your time at disney or your culture at disney what would that be and why i think uh, uh one word i would say trust we all try to, at Disney, make sure that we are have such clear expectations with each other and we've educated the staff and the team about why we do things and why it's important for them to maintain uh, a positive role, no matter if they're having a bad day or not, about professionalism. Uh, the guest are, is counting on us. It's a very expensive trip. It's some for a lot of people. It's a trip of a lifetime. It's the first time they brought their kids. Cost a fortune, and we have a responsibility to make sure that that trip goes perfectly. And we got to make sure that we teach everybody, no matter what job they have at Disney, that they have a role in that happening. People say, "Well, I just cleaned the bathrooms." And I said, yeah, you might be the most important person because everybody goes there. <laughs> so, you know, or the housekeeper says, well, I'm just a housekeeper. No, no, no. If I come back to my room, I just paid $300 a night for and the beds are not made and there's hair in the sink and no soap. And you've got to learn to make sure you can explain to everybody in your organization where they fit in and how they make a difference because they do. The engineer that doesn't take care of the air conditioning maintenance in January when it goes down in August during a woman's wedding. It all is connected. And that's what you got to learn to make sure everybody matters and they know they matter and how they matter. You got to tell them because most, a lot of people underestimate who they are. They underestimate their influence. They underestimate what they can achieve. We know this. Either they grew up in an insecure dysfunctional family or they have it they're an introvert or they, who knows who knows and we've got to help people get better and the way you get help people get better you know i always say at disney the key is hire them right get the right people train them right and treat them right i mean this is the key to life humility and discipline are the probably the two most important things you'll have as a mother humility or uh, not so, so much humility, but uh, uh, empathy. Uh, let me say that. Empathy 
and discipline is what mothers do. And they balance it. My mother, you know, she might kick your butt in the morning for not making your bed, but before you go to school, she'll say, I love you. <laughs> and she might kick your butt again at night because you were late. But then she'll tell you, I love you. <laughs> and everybody loves their mother, even though mothers are tough. Mothers are the best. I mean, mothers are tough because they have a long-term vision. And I hope you do in your business. Mothers have a vision that everything they do matters and it pays off 18 years later. I mean, that's a, that's a, you know, kind of a strategy, <laughs> you know, you do these so, things. Yeah. When so, I was thinking about talking to you, that's actually a question that came up in my mind. When did you have the vision that you would get to where you have been in life and to where you are now? Like, did you know when you started off that one day you were going to be a VP? Did you have that kind of inclination or was there a moment when you were like, wow, I'm, I'm destined for greater things. No, I never did. Every job I got, and I got about 20 or 21 different jobs during my career and promotions, and I got promoted frequently, and I was shocked every time I got promoted. And I thought, <laughs> how, do, how am I continuing to fool these people? They think <laughs> I know what I'm doing. But let me tell you, once you understand nobody knows what they're doing, your self-confidence will increase dramatically. <laughs> Especially, and this is a problem, I'll tell you, for women. You underestimate, I can tell you right now, they say, you know, there's a lot of the kid people being laid off, or uh, we have even relatives who, they say, there's a job opening. But I don't think I can do that job. I'm not qualified. So you don't apply. Maybe you're 90% qualified. You don't apply. And a guy has no qualifications, he applies. You got to go for it. Just, you can do usually 50% more than you think you can do. And it's some, it just depends. And maybe you too and others, maybe they've had a family structure where your self-confidence has really been built and you're, you're, no, you, you don't have it. But a lot of women have that problem. And I, we're always encouraging them. Go for it. Don't, uh, you'll figure it out. You'll learn it. The technical part of the job is going to be the easiest part. It's if you have good leadership skills and the things we're talking about today, you can go into any business. I told you, I told somebody I could go run a car company. I don't know anything about cars because that's not what, you know, one I used to get criticized because I was in charge of Disney World parks and hotels and I never worked in a park. I told them I wasn't there to work in the park. They were, I was there to make sure they <laughs> And I was saying, when I was growing up, I didn't make my son's bed. I made sure it got made. And that's what your job is to make sure things get done. You don't have to do everything. In fact, you can't do everything. You got IT, finance, supply chain, marketing, sales, lawyers. That's not your job as a leader. Your job as a mom is not to do everything for your child. It's to make sure they learn how to do it and they do it, <laughs> you know? So you got to make sure that at some point they brush their teeth without you getting on them <laughs> and that they make their bed if that's what you want or that they uh, are polite or that they um, do whatever they're supposed to do take the trash out or feed the dog or and that uh, and they learn responsibility that's your job your job is not to do it and a lot of people that's the problem they say we'll get a dog and you, as long as you feed it kid doesn't feed it mom starts taking care of the dog well that's a mistake You've just sent a message to that child. And you see it at work. All of you have had jobs where the boss does not make sure people do what they're told. And uh, they let it go. And then they get accused of favoritism. And then they get accused of uh, treating somebody better than somebody else. And then their trust level goes down. And uh, it's all connected. It's uh, be careful what you say and do every day. Everything you say and do is being watched and judged every day. Be careful what you say and do. Mm -hmm. You can say, well, that's not a big deal. Let me tell you what, everything's a big deal. Watch it on the internet. Watch it on, uh, you know, people. Be careful what you say and do. Everybody's got a camera. Everybody's got a recording device. And it will come out. If you do something wrong, it'll come out. So even today, more than ever. I'm lucky. When I was 18, 19, 20, I, all of my records are in a box at the, in the basement of the sheriff's department. 
not on the internet. <laughs> I got caught gambling underage, but you can't find that on the internet. Even though I went to jail for four hours when I was 18 <laughs> for having a fake ID, but you can't find that on the internet. <laughs> they will now. <laughs> yeah, they, an employer would find that. You might not get hired. I mean, everything, it's fair, you know, it doesn't take much to get in trouble these days. And you see it, I'm sure in college, you see it all the time, stupid things that happen that people get in all kinds of trouble. Even by my second year in college, I had very much learned that I could tell you a handful of people who were put into the local newspaper and I saw some of them get opportunities taken away yeah. because somebody saw it and somebody said something. Well, I've seen it and professionally. It's, it's a very real thing. They question your judgment when you have those kind of records. I mean, you know, if he did that, what else will he do? Or if she did that, what else might she do? And, uh, well, it's harder today. That's why you'll never end talking to your kids. <laughs> you know, the only two things parents worry about, the only two things forever is safety and education. That's all. That's all your job is. You have the kids now. All you got to do is keep them safe and get them educated and life will be good. Those are hard things. They're hard things as the kid, though, too, to listen to. Um, yeah. But you start early. So you start while they still love you, not when they're 13 and they don't like you anymore. <laughs> so be careful. Anything well, Emily, you start early usually works out better. Yes. You know, like a term paper, start early, not the night before. One okay. last question before the rest of the team jumps back in. So what was your hardest leadership lesson to learn? Dealing with people. I was uh, insecure. I grew up on a little farm in Oklahoma. You may have heard this. My mother was married five times. I've been adopted twice. I got my name Cockrell when I was 16 by husband number four. Uh, he was a doctor, had money, so I got to go to college, and then I dropped out because I didn't go to class, went in the Army, and uh, so when I got into business and became a manager, I, was real, I didn't know how to deal with somebody not performing. I, couldn't, I didn't know how to talk about it. I didn't want to talk about it. It was intimidating. And uh, I had a boss who I was not dealing one. I was a food and beverage director for the Chicago Marriott. And I wasn't dealing with a guy who worked for me and he wasn't performing. And it was really, we were having problems. Big opera, the five banquets for 5,000, 3,000 that were late. And, well, and my boss, I think of the way I got turned around. He said, Lee, if you don't deal with him, I want to deal with you. You know, and he talked to me about responsibility. Uh, if you want to be a leader, you've got to. So I start slowly but surely trying to learn how to do it, how to approach a difficult situation. The hardest thing in your whole life that will always be having to terminate somebody or push them out of their job, or that's always the hardest. I mean, uh, the technical things are nothing. Every problem you're going to have, and every problem I had that I lost sleep over was dealing with people that, uh, in a way that. Uh, you know, I know they got a family and I'm about to let them go and they're going to cost them their health insurance. And I mean, if you have empathy, <laughs> that will bother you, but you got to do it. And as a mother, there's going to be hard things you got to do and you got to do them. Now, mothers, they don't, mothers don't care if you're happy. They care if you're successful. So they don't mind making you unhappy occasionally. Uh, and we've got to do that at work. If you want your people to be successful, you got to deal with hard issues. And by the way, if they if you if they're doing something wrong, you don't deal with it and don't talk to them about it and don't turn it around, and you end up having to fire them. It's pretty much your fault. It's pretty much your fault. That's a question that I typically ask when I, when I'm asked to interview leaders um, who are above me. But we do team interviews in most of the organization I've been in. That's the question that I always ask: is how do you deal with an underperforming employee? Um, because I think that speaks a lot. To what kind of leader you are and I think that shows a lot of what kind of leader you are that that's the hardest leadership lesson that you've had to learn it's pretty impressive people ask me I said okay if you don't know how to lead and you got a big problem in your business uh, 
Call your mother, she'll tell you how to do it. You call up your mom and say, I've got this employee working for me. I got a real responsible job. He's coming to work late all the time. He never gets his work done on time. What should I do? And your mother will say, have you talked to him? And you know, <laughs> and then, but, or you can say, I talked to him and he still does it. And I've talked to him three times. What should I do, mom? You should fire him. <laughs> I mean, mothers, don't, it's not complicated. <laughs> What would your mother tell you to do? And let me tell you, I'm serious. No, I don't care how hard your situation is. Call your mom. <laughs> and she'll know. She doesn't even have to think about it. <laughs> and Hannah, you already know, right? What would you to do? You know what to do. Because you are got a uh, relationship with that baby and with your husband. That are, I mean, it's, it, your brain knows what to do. And you got to get to that same way of thinking and when you're leading people because you have the most power for their future in your hands. It's either 10 years from now, they're gonna be good and doing great and better or not, depending on the way you managed them, the way you led them, the way you uh, told them the truth, the way you got them training, the way you, you have an impact on them, their families, their children, I mean, leadership's a big deal. It's not just a job to blah, 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 and go home and get a paycheck every week. You're responsible for people, people's lives. <laughs> you know, <laughs> And I know that. And I didn't always know that. I had to learn that, that leadership's not a job. It's a responsibility. And, uh, you know, it's just, you know, just manage like a mother, you'll be fine. <laughs> and fathers ask mothers how to manage. <laughs> so husbands ask your wives what fathers to do, are not near right? As good as mothers, no. <laughs> fathers are working on the 10 year plan, moms are working on today. <laughs> That's so true. Well, yeah, we want to thank you for being here. Uh, when I was preparing for this, I listened to your first podcast with everybody, and it was just it was refreshing. It's something that honestly today I needed to hear. And I hope that a lot of people needed to hear it as well. Um, just the difference between being the average and the great employee and how you take those leadership, leadership skills into what you're doing today. Uh, you know, I'm not a leader right now in my organization. I shouldn't say that everybody can be a leader, no matter what position you're in, but I'm not in a management position. Um, and all of us undergrad and graduate program, and anybody else who's listening, I think you've given some real great advice on how to step up your game, how to make sure you do today what is going to pay off later. Could be 50 years from now just by putting into your retirement, but um, learning yeah. how to have those I difficult mean, conversations. Years, and so it paid off for me to behave. <laughs> My wife said she's going to stay, so I'm doing it. <laughs> so have you guys been together 51 years now? We've been married 52 and uh, probably together 54 and nice. if you want to know how time goes fly i got a 51 year old son where'd he come from <laughs> this is how time goes by you got that little eight month old one day you're going to wake up and they're going to college and the next day they're going to get married and the next day they're going to be 51. <laughs> this is what happened and that's why doing what needs done today to pay off later is very, very important. So you thank you so much for your time. Except your child. You will love, you love your child more than you love your husband. That's the way it is. It's not, it's hard to explain. So. Well, I will turn it back off over to Dr. Mulva Hill and Dr. Frickditch. All right. All right, thank you. Emily, do you have uh, any final thoughts or questions for Lee? Yeah, just for final thoughts. It was cool because you were the first guest for the Take the Hill podcast and to come full circle and have you back here again. And we learned a lot about time management as well as leadership. So thank you for being here. It's always good to be invited back. Oh, yes. Remember this. <laughs> I do hope we get to meet you in person one day. 
in well, Disney. Get Patrick to get his act together and get you down here. It's his fault. <laughs> well, I, I think ownership. we're going in the spring. I don't know if we'll get to meet you then, but uh, well, IEP, now. Dr. Perkintich. Yeah, we will. Let me, know if you're here. Let me go out by then. I'll meet you for coffee or something. She she's wants me to take good care of myself because I'm old. And uh, <laughs> that's why I know so much, too, because I'm older than you. But uh, she sets the alarm, so if I try to leave the house, it goes off. So I, it's hard for me to get out. But, uh, <laughs> now, you can't be talking about time management if your wife's the one who's managing your time. Well, it's a kind of, this pandemic's created a different dynamic. <laughs> she told me, take care of yourself so you can take care of me. Wisdom. So that's my uh, running orders. Yeah, yeah. So like I, by the time I get the house cleaned every day and cook dinner and do the laundry, it's, uh, you know, it's hard. Angelo, uh, you've been kind of quiet. Anything for Lee before we start to wrap up? Yeah. Yeah, Lee, I'm, I'm curious, you know, 2020 has been a pretty difficult rough year for basically everybody who's walking on this rock right now. So, you know, I really enjoyed your conversation. I love your perspective on things. What, quality should leaders be embracing as they're going into 2021 with the hopes that that year is going to be kind of a balancing act between what happened in 2020 and picking up the pieces? Yeah. First of all, I don't think it will be. I think it's the worst is yet to come. And I think everybody ought to get their heads on straight about that. Um, I think you've got to just be thinking about right now yourself, your family, and maybe your friends or who you can help and help each other. Uh, don't underestimate. There's work out there if anybody loses their job. Uh, most of the economy is doing well. If you're, uh, you know, in manufacturing, I mean, look at the stock market. It's almost back to normal. I mean, it's just all the, if you're in the entertainment restaurant or airline business, you look like it's the end of the world. But if you go to the grocery store, or Costco, Walmart, uh, all these other places, online, uh, Amazon, it's cooking. So there are jobs out there. And, uh, and uh, you just got to not underestimate what you can do. And I would be right now, uh, uh, as Connor and I talked about, well, you ought to be thinking about now what you want to do later and see if you're lining up. Maybe you were going to major in something, but you ought to be getting some skill and experience in something else that uh, can be forecasted to be pretty hot businesses and uh, ways of doing things. You know, 90% 90, 90 of the people don't do what they got their major in. You know, my son got his major in political science and he was the vice president of the Magic Kingdom. The guy who ran operations for me had a degree in chemistry. <laughs> I mean, we all think we know what we're going to do, but you don't. You don't know what's going to happen, what's going to turn out. And you're going to run into somebody that knows you're great and they want you to come and join them. And they may have nothing to do with your degree. And it'll be with your reputation. And you, let me tell you, attitude will be the, your best friend. Attitude will be your best friend. Like, that's what, that's what got me ahead. I didn't have a degree, but I had a good attitude. And if you don't have a degree, you better have a good attitude because people will help you. And I'm disciplined, organized. So when you have a good attitude and you get things done, people, uh, that's all the people want. You know, they love that. And you got to think about, it. are you organized as you should be? And uh, do you have as positive an attitude and can do and perseverance and as you should be? As your mother said, get that look off your face. Uh, and that's true. It's, uh, you may not be happy, but at least act happy. <laughs> that's what we say at Disney. Disney is the happiest place on earth or else. So, uh, you know, and you don't have to be happy at Disney. You got to just be act happy eight hours a day. You can go be unmiserable when you go home, but not at work. And when you're in a happy environment and culture, you change. When you're around good people, happy people, nice people, and all of you are going to think about the people you don't want your kids to hang out with because that culture, they will be sucked in. Be careful. <laughs> I'm telling you, it's, there's certain neighborhoods you need to stay out of. And uh, there's certain 
adult friends that you need to stay away from. And uh, because, and I don't tell you how many times we had kids that we made sure our grandkids didn't hang out with them because it just goes wrong. And peer pressure is really uh, a tough situation. Kids fall for peer pressure easily. Uh, being in the clique, being in the group. Uh, so you got to kind of restrain them from uh, being exposed to the wrong things and talk about it a lot. You got to explain to them why you don't want them hanging out with Johnny. <laughs> and it's not easy. It's a hard conversation. And you may have to call Johnny's mother and get into a conversation because she probably doesn't know what Johnny's up to. <laughs> Mother's, you know, you know, you just got to be careful. Uh, you are influenced every day. Every second of the day, your, be your brain is getting handled. You're, get you're, you're being programmed all the time by people around you program and Lee, are you optimistic for for 2021 for the year i guess are you optimistic for next year um well not in my line of business i'm not i don't think the, i think disney will be five or six years before it gets back to normal i think the airlines is going to be uh, i mean people are just not good i mean people won't take a chance with their life i mean and uh and it's not being handled right. I mean, we are not showing, le the president's not showing leadership. And this thing, sh if this thing should have been way lower by now, we should have been all over this thing. Let me tell you, if I was at Disney and handled this like this, the hurricane's coming and I kind of blow it off and well, maybe it'll come, maybe it won't, it should get better. Or 9-11, we handled that. I mean, you got to have a plan, you got to implement it and you got to enforce it, whether people like it or not. That's what I tell people. Your job is to do what has to be done, when it has to be done, and the way it should be done, whether you like it or not, and whether they like it or not. That's leadership. And that's a mother's job. <laughs> whether they like it or not, hey, your kids are going to be mad at you half the time. That's tough. And um, that's what's not happening. Uh, if you want to be popular, you want to... popularity, you know, is dangerous. And also, don't try to become famous. I told people, famous people. All the famous people are miserable. They're getting divorces and drugs and alcohol. And uh, I mean, come on, just be good. Don't be, try to be famous because uh, that's an ego trip. And then it causes you to do the wrong decisions because you're not doing them for the good of others. You're doing them for your good of you. And uh, so I, I, I'm worried about uh, the country's leadership and and uh, frankly i mean uh, i mean it i must say i never got involved in politics before this i never said anything negative about any president or congressman big uh, i mean never and i actually i will tell you i lose sleep over it i lay and think about it and uh, so lee can we write you in you can do anything you want yeah <laughs> I, I mailed my ballot and I said the, I posted the Cockrell family has delivered seven votes for Biden. And uh, I posted that and about a thousand people have said, yeah, we're giving two and another one, we're giving five and we're giving seven. <laughs> so we'll see. But to me, it's, and by the way, some of the policies that uh, conservatives and want, I, I'm fine with, it's not about policy, it's about decency, it's about integrity, it's about, uh, Truthfulness. It's, I mean, to be honest with you, Lee, I would say to all conservatives, you got your Supreme Court justice. Now get back to being a decent person. <laughs> you know? Absolutely. And I was actually going to say, Lee, like to your point, this is, you were saying this is the first time you've actually been a little bit more outspoken about po politics. I've been watching I never your. never said a word ever. I've been watching your Instagram, <laughs> and, and I've actually never said this out loud, but. Um, I, this is the first time I'm, I'm actually voting. Uh, I registered to vote for the first time this year. And I, I actually know a lot about politics. I follow it, but I just never did until this year. I am registered and I already have mailed in my, my ballot. And so I think we're seeing a lot of that this year that people were doing things um, out of necessity now. Uh, and, and I, so I commend you for that. It's, it's a scary time. And, you know, I feel, I feel for the first time, like the actual obligation 
and uh, desire and need to, to go and vote. It's true. And by the way, it's, whatever happens is not going to affect me. I'm old. <laughs> it's going to affect you and your children and your grandchildren. Uh, this is a long-term issue. Um, hey, I'm retired. I'm in good shape. <laughs> but I, my grandkids are at risk and their kids will be at risk for a, a America we don't uh, recognize. And, uh, oh, hey, Lee. Oh, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Oh, no, I was just going to jump in for time's sake, but uh, again, I just, um, we were going to move on, but uh, um, I just want to thank you for uh, the opportunity. Um, I know I've been, uh, I've had the opportunity to be with you several times, and every time uh, I've been inspired uh, in so many different ways. I can't even tell you. Right now, I'm trying to get my health back, and I remember you talking about that when we were in Disney, and and I'm working on that, uh, you know, all the time. And, and, uh, and I've looked at many of your, um, the, the things that you've just said, and they've been very, very inspirational. And the one thing I want to thank you is that you take the time. You, you, you just said that you, you, um, you're retired. You don't have to do this. But I, I'm thankful that you are inspiring other individuals to make a difference, that you're inspiring individuals to become better leaders. And I just thank you for your time and uh, the, the abilities that you have that you're sharing with others. And um, I, I appreciate it uh, so much. And you've been so gracious to Point Park and Indiana University when we come to uh, Disney. You've treated us so well. And again, I want to express that appreciation. And thank you for being a part of our podcast. And, and so that I don't really have a question for you, but I'm going to turn it over to Patrick and and just, uh, again, thank you so much. Uh, Dennis, I, I want to get my wife in here, and I want you to say all that again. <laughs> <laughs> I want her to tell her how important I am. No. So, I, right. And by the way, I would say to all of you, don't underestimate what you can do for other people right now. There's people out there that need you, your parents, your grandparents. They need a call. They need you to focus. They need... You got students that are suffering from anxiety and depression right now. You got to find out where they are. You got to give them a call. You got to help them. You've got to, let me tell you, you got to pay attention these days because there's a lot going on and we can all help somebody. When I, I went through anxiety and depression, the thing that helped me the most, I had a couple, couple people just came over and would sit outside and talk, just getting my mind off of the issue I was going through with my wife's health. And um, when you can't solve something yourself, don't. Don't get isolated. Isolation is a big problem. And it's really affecting people, being isolated, especially older people. Um, and you gotta figure out, you know, a phone call is an amazing thing. You think it's no big deal. It is a big deal. Hey, I was thinking about you today. I hope you're doing good. Can I send, do something for you? Can I stop, you know? The little things are the big things. And uh, I try to think about every day, is there somebody I need to call or check in with? Because, uh, and I can't say I don't have time. I got plenty of time now. <laughs> it's getting not even a good excuse anymore. So uh, think about, write down two or three people you're gonna make their day today or tomorrow or the next day. And uh, you will. I always say, call your parents and say, I just want to call and tell you how much I love you today and how much I appreciate all the, uh, all the things you've done for me in my life. And your dad will say, what happened? You dropping out, you moving back home, did your husband leave you, uh, and your mother will start crying. And uh, <laughs> we don't do it often enough. We don't do it often enough because it's, hmm, that you would make your mother or grandmother or neighbor's day, I mean, People need to know they matter. And uh, we're all suffering right now. I need to get back out speaking. That's why I do these things, because people say, why do you still speak, Lee? And I said, because people clap, and it makes me feel better. So <laughs> when I play golf, nobody claps. So uh, you got to do things that are, and th even these kind of things. W would it be better to be in person? Sure, but still, this is good. This is good. Fine. This is good. And uh, don't underestimate the impact and influence you have with other people. It's big, more than you imagine. 
Yeah, and I think that's a really good uh, way to wrap things up here, Louise. I think, you know, you, you have to trust yourself and trust in what you can bring to the table. And I think if you put yourself out there, um, and you did that for us a little over a year and a half ago, I think when we first reached out to you, uh, that was our first podcast episode that we were recording. And on just a chance, I said, hey, you know what? This Lee guy said that he responds to all emails. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to send him an email and see if he wants to be on our podcast. And I don't yeah. think I told you at the time, I, you know, I, I pulled the old, hey, I'm in the Orlando area trick. <laughs> and after you replied and said yes, my next conversation was, hey, boss, will you pay for an airline ticket for me to go? <laughs> And, uh, you know, we've, we've I'm, been... I'm retired. I'm looking for free meals, free anything. <laughs> so uh, we'll send you uh, definitely a free shirt and free mug. So oh, but, uh... I need another mug. <laughs> Absolutely. I know you're a big fan of socks. But I need another have... water bottle. I've got only got about 80. <laughs> With every sure. university in the United States on them. <laughs> no doubt. Go on eBay and sell them. Make some money. <laughs> Well, again, it, that word, I think out of everything that you've said today is trust um, is really the beginning of really strong relationships. And, you know, I think when you have strong relationships, both personally and professionally, that's when you see the other characteristics begin to am really become amplified. Um, and great things come from that within teams and organizations. Well, Hannah and Emily and Angelo, thanks. You did all the work. Patrick put it together. Dennis just hang in there. This is <laughs> free speech or something. So. <laughs> we know our rules. Really, seriously. This is your number one goal. Nothing matters more than that. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you so much uh, from all of us here uh, at the podcast and our team. And we do really appreciate, as Dennis said, uh, the time you've given to us. And uh, like I said, we, we look forward to returning to Orlando uh, this spring. IUP will be there. We'll let you know. And then uh, hopefully next fall, uh, the entire group uh, would be back. So we'll stay in touch and see what uh, uh, your wife allows you to do. <laughs> Good luck to all of you. You're going to be great. All right. Thank you, Lee. It was our pleasure. Bye now. All right, everybody, thank you for tuning in today. Uh, we want to especially thank Hannah and Emily for taking the lead as hosts. Uh, we hope you guys enjoyed the opportunity and found the conversation to be engaging. Uh, again, Lee, you know, he's always has been very gracious with his time. Uh, and as you said, I think the takeaway, you know, I'm not going to build on to it too much, but again, I think we talked about trust and confidence and believing in yourself. Um, like I said, those are the big things. Uh, Dennis and Angelo, any final thoughts before we wrap up for today? I just want to thank our listeners. And uh, again, how much I appreciate Emily and Hannah for their contribution today. Uh, we appreciate it. Yeah, Hannah, Emily, you both did fantastic and uh, very impressed. Uh, to be honest, I was a little nervous and I had nothing really to do in this one. I was nervous coming into this because of Lee. So uh, you two are very impressive. And I, I haven't laughed this much in like a dedicated period of time in a long time. Like, I just feel a lot better after this conversation, even after asking him, uh, Lee, if he was optimistic about 21, you know, he was being realistic with us and uh, we'll just keep working toward a brighter future. Awesome. Hannah, Emily, any final thoughts before we wrap the show? I just want to kind of piggyback off of what Angela said is, um, when talking to him, I kind of went back to when I first started my career because I, I would be considered mid-career now. I've been out in the workforce since 2014, so going on six to seven years, I don't want to actually admit that. <laughs> I still feel like I'm an undergrad sometimes. Uh, but I asked an, a question in when I first started, and I'm not saying I would recommend or not recommend this, but it was when oil was becoming big and it was at the last governor's Pennsylvania election and I had just started my first big girl job. And I asked, you know, does your role in this business affect how you're voting? I didn't even ask like, hey, who are you voting for? What's going on? But oil and gas was a huge part of our industry. And um, my boss said, yeah, it absolutely does. And going back to what Lee said about knowing who you are. If your boss asks you to do something illegal, you know, do the best at your job, but still keep going. 
And I, I feel like he really was going with culture, like know who you are, make sure that follows through with your job. But I love that we could have that political conversation and it not be anything more than informational. Um, so I really appreciated Angelo asking those questions. Um, and I would love to see us continue to just develop those thoughts and ideas. And I love that you guys do this podcast. So thanks for having us and all listeners. Thanks for listening. <laughs> um, so thanks guys. Yeah. I loved how genuinely he was with his answers and just having this opportunity um, to host a podcast. So thank you all. Well, it was certainly our pleasure to uh, have both of you guys step into those roles. And again, like I said, Lee is usually pretty honest and upfront with his insight and experience. Uh, so thank you guys for hanging in there and uh, managing and leading the conversation. All right, with that, folks, that wraps another episode of Take the Hill. So for all of our listeners, thank you again for tuning in today. Uh, we appreciate your ongoing support and dedication uh, to us. Like I said, that's what keeps us going. So please, please keep sending your ideas and your questions to us. Uh, like I said, Dennis and I and Angelo, and we all look at them uh, as we think about future episodes. Uh, Dennis, thank you for being here today. We appreciate it. Looking good as always. And Angelo, thank you for keeping us straight behind the scenes. And if you have not done so, check out Spinning Thoughts with Angelo Gargaro. Like I said, he is stepping up and leading the game in his own podcast as well. And that will do it for our show today. And we at Take Deal look forward to seeing you guys on a future episode. Take care, everybody. Thank you.